Hi guys, so this time I'm going to be presenting um, the bony landmarks of forearm, forearm and hand. I'm going to start um, uh, going with uh, the trail one that's indicated uh, in the book of uh, Trail Guide to the Body, okay? So we have here uh, trail one where we're going to start at the knob hill, explores the elbow and distal humerus. So uh, it has the olecranon process and fossa, which here indicated uh, here or in this case here, right? These are the epicondyles of the humerus, okay? So from the olecranon process and fossa to the condyles of the humerus. And we also have the supracondylar ridge of the humerus, okay? This is supracondylar ridge okay and then we're gonna go ahead for the trail two we're gonna uh, find the ra razor's edge uh, follows the uh, it follows the length of the superficial ulna okay so from the olecranon process you can see here it's going to the shaft of the ulna then it goes to the head of the ulna and then to the styloid process of the ulna Okay, so trailer, um, trailer, uh, my apologies, trail three, it's the pivot pass. Okay, so it tra uh, travels the length of the radius, the bone which creates the pivoting action of the forearm. Okay, so from a, a lateral epicondyle of the humerus, it goes to the head of the radius, this is the head of the radius, remember this is the head of the ulna, and then shaft of the radius. Uh, you see the difference of the uh, shaft of the ulna to the shaft of the radius, okay? And then solid process of the radius, okay? And then uh, the Lister's tubercle. This is the Lister's tubercle. Solid process, this is the solid process of ulna, solid process of radius, and this is uh, Lister's tubercle, okay? Um... We have the trail four, um, walking on your hands, where, which I'm going to go turn in page, next page. Explores the small carpal bones of the wrist, as well as the bones and the joints of the hand. Okay, so, so I have here, let's see, yeah, I believe um, you can see everything here. Um, so you see the image um, in in this area here okay so the olecranon process and fossa so um the client um is being uh placed in a seated position um and then uh the, in the posterior view of the right elbow um the, the therapist is locating the olecranon process okay so partner being seated um, the client shakes hands with your partner and explores a large superficial knob at the elbow. So palpate and explore its angular surface and sides. So passively flex and extend the elbow, noticing how the olecranon process feels in various positions. So the olecranon process and fossa. So the olecranon process for elbow is located on the proximal end of the ulna and articulates with the distal humerus. Its large surface is the attachment site for the triceps brachii muscle. It forms the point of the elbow and is easily located. The olecranon process is a large cavity on the posterior distal end of the humerus, designed to accommodate the olecranon process when the elbow is extended. So lo located deep to the triceps brachii tendon, the fossa is only partially accessible. So the image here, while the client is um, palpating the medial epicondyle, okay? Olecr this is the olecranon process. Um, this is being the medial epicondyle, okay? I'm just going to read quickly the olecranon fossa. Flex the elbow and locate the olecranon process. Roll your finger approximately around the top of the process, pressing through the triceps tendon and into the fossa because of the presence of the triceps brachial tendon and the proximity of the locranon process, only a small crescent-shaped ditch will be accessible. 
When locating the fossa, are you proximal to the tip of the olracanon? Process, if you flex and extend the elbow slightly, do you feel a change in the fossa's shape and size? I'm going to be talking about the epicondyles of the humerus in the next video.